The good thing is, only thing you got to do is follow instructions. You follow instructions, you know how to follow instructions, you're going to be good. Story time with Wala. I'm about to really tell y'all about me joining the Marine Corps. Cue the intro. This motivation. Suck, suck, get on your job. If you hate, get on your job. You can look me in my eyes, see I'm ready for whatever. Anything don't kill me, make me better. The year is 2004. Yes, 2004. So, they had something called a delayed entry program. Delayed entry program is when you sign up for active duty military, but you're still in school. You're still in school, but you can sign up for the active duty military. But they train you, the, the, the recruiter, come pick you up. You know what I'm saying? They treat you good, take you out, buy you food. Hey, recruiter might throw some shoes on your feet. Everything. Just like you getting recruited for going to college. And like you was the star recruit. So, I was basically, I was a recruit for the Marine Corps. I was in the delayed injury program. So, I'm still going to school, getting out, got me a job. End up giving me a little job at Burger King, put a good word in so I can get the job. I I I got myself the job, really. That's a whole nother story. He basically training me, getting me ready for the PFT. The PFT for you can you have to do a PFT in the ASVAB before you can go to the uh, military. So he basically just training me up with that. He basically making sure I'm fit and making sure I'm I can grade higher on this test. So he used to come pick me up, you know what I'm saying? Take me to go get something to eat. Take me to goddamn the work if I needed them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it came a time where I had to go to Mrs. Uh, Montgomery to take the practice ass valve. I had to go take the practice ass valve in Montgomery. So he had a little little coupe. I can't think what kind of car it was. It was the little Nissan. It was the little Nissan Coupe type car. I can't even, I don't know the name of it, but it was silver. The Nissan Coupe type car, two seater. That motherfucker was fast, so, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, like, he had a little little condo out there. He had a condo, little brand new condos up there in Sarah Land. Nigga shot me to his high, like, so I'm thinking, like, bruh, they, they living in the Marines. They living. So, I see this dude, he living life, like, regular black dude, say he went to Blunt. So I'm like, damn, like, bro, I can't wait to go. So we shot up to Montgomery, and the whole time he let me practice on this laptop. I'm practicing the ASVAB on this laptop. So we go to Maxwell, Na Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery. So we pull up on base. When I say this base, to my mind, coming from where I was coming from, Alabama Village, Pritchard, Third Ward, coming where I'm coming from, and I go to Montgomery Air Force Base. This motherfucker look like Beverly Hills to me. I'm loving it. I'm like, bird, this, this is amazing. This is this the military? Like, this is what I'm gonna be signed up for. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm ready to. So. They, when you're doing the practice as bell test, they really treat you like, like you about to, they practice, they, they basically is practicing you actually get sent out. Like, so you do the little mock swelling in and all type of stuff. So I went, like, so we had to stay up there like a week in. It was like a Friday, we made it there. Went to play basketball that Friday night in a fresh edge NBA type. I thought it was like NBA arena. Playing a pickup game in the NBA arena type shit. So, so that Saturday, I had to take the test like round two or three. So, we had to stay in a nice little, nice little on base lodge, pool and everything. So, I'm talking about, bro, they treat you like you're a recruit. They, like, I'm talking about like 
like you going to Alabama or something. That's how they treat you. So I ain't go to college, but I I got the recruit recruitment of a five star player. So I go to Maxwell Air Force Base. Saturday, that Saturday come, time to go take the test. Get dressed, yeah, yeah. All right, we gonna go shoot the. We went to Shawnee, goddamn. Got something to eat. Something to eat, like your boy Drip say. <laughs> so it was about time to take the test. Went in, take the test. I'm in the 91 percentile. Like practice test, just the practice exam now. Like, but it was the thing how it was. Like you could take the test at school. Now when I took the test at school. I, like no one took it serious. I didn't take it serious when they let us take the ass down in 11th grade. So, but when I went to take uh, the practice test, it was higher than the one that I took at school. He was like, "Man, you graded the number one, the 91 percentile. Like, you can pick your job." I'm like, "Dick." I'm like, "Sir, so what that mean? Like, well, what what type of job I should be?" He was like, "I mean, you should be a radio operator." So I was like, all right, all right, let me do my homework on this. I ain't trying to get stuck with no jobs that I don't know nothing about. So I was like, all right, I, 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 I'll get back with you on that. So that Sunday, no, that Saturday night, that Saturday night. Now I'm in high school now. Now I can't be no more than 16, 17 at the time. Saturday night rolled around. It was the E-Club on base. On Maxwell Air Force Base, a little e-club. He didn't take me in now, but he, we pulled up in the little parking lot. You see how they, they going to the club. It was like a club. So I'm like, bro, this, like this, like this gonna be life. Like, I can't wait. So Sunday, we wake up, so hit the slab. We hit the slab Sunday after we ate, got down, hit the slab Sunday, got down, shot back the mobile. So, still going through high school. I'm still thinking we, he come and pick me up every other weekend, every other day. Like we, we training at the recruit, recruitment center over there on Sage, Sage Avenue, down where we live, it's a recruitment center. We running in the back. We running back there training, running three miles every time and see how many pull up, pull ups you can do, doing crunches. Like we basically work like training. So, all right, that was like my whole 11th grade year, even working, training for the Marines. 12th grade roll around. 12th grade, first first semester 12th grade, I was getting out at 101. One o'clock, 101, I had to be to work by two. I just had my work clothes in the car. I just had to be to work by two. So, be to work by two. Get out of school at one on one first semester. Second semester, rode around. I used to get out of school at 1051. 1051, so I got out early, but I still had to be to work at two. So it was a bunch of time where it was just, you know, you got, you getting out at 11, basically, you ain't got to be to work at two. And you driving? Had a whip. My brother gave me, I'm going to drive my brother car. My, uh, well, I had an Oldsmobile 98. With black tenant windows on that thing. That thing had no brakes at all. I'm talking about you had to put keep putting brake fluids in that bit. Burn. Me and my nigga was in that bit one one day. Put that bitch in reverse. You know you gotta push your foot on the brake to put it in reverse. Put it. Ain't no brakes. So we bag up. On, the, what stopped us is the curb, the little parking curbs that's in the. We had to bag up all the way across the parking lot. Slow, it was going slow, but the curve ended up stopping. <clears throat> so I had to, <clears throat> then I was able to put it in drive. And then, what about the parking lot? <laughs> Where the only way we get in that parking lot was if we like timed it just right, stop pressing the gas at one time and, and turn it off in that thing because there wasn't no brakes. And just pull up in the parking spot, throw that bitch in park. Dangerous, but. It was a car, so I was gonna drive that bitch to the wheel fall off. Had six by nines in that bitch. We we bumping boosting. Yeah. So this 12th grade. So graduation rolled around. We graduated on a Friday. We graduated on a Friday. 
Okay, you know you got that Saturday, Sunday. Sunday night, around like 10, 30. And like, this is when my mama found out I was going to the Marines. Because I, my stepdad is the one that signed all the paperwork for me to go. So my mama really ain't knew too much about it. So she just knew I was thinking about going, but she didn't know I was going two days after graduation. So she ended up going, taking me to the recruit station. She thinking I'm just have to go there, but she don't know, like, bro, we about to leave tonight. Like, so I got all my stuff packed. You know what I'm saying? The little stuff that you can take. I got all, like, got, got your little bag that you take with you. For clothes that you got to put on after graduation, when you graduate from Marine Corps boot camp. Your regular clothes, you take them with you. So, two days after graduation, I get, go to the recruitment center, we get on the bus, on the little van. Now, it's people that's, it's Army, Navy. I, no, I think it just was Army people, really. Us, Marines, and Army people on this bus. Drove to Montgomery, we picked up some more people that was signing up to go to the Marines in Montgomery. So, now we, uh, the boot camp is all the way in South Carolina, Paris Island, South Carolina. But Army is like right up the road or something. I can't think where the Army boot camp is, but it's right up the road from wherever South Carolina, wherever Paris Island is, where Marine Corps boot camp is. The Army is right up the road because the night that we were supposed to, because we, in Marines, you can't go there to 12 o'clock. Every recruitment sent every recruits that go to Paris Island boot camp, Marine Corps boot camp, you have to be there at 1201 the morning of the day that you start. That's the only time that they take you can't come out. So, and when you pulling up in the gate, they make you put your head down, they make you put your head down. They don't need they don't want you to see how they get back there, they'll drive around. To try to make you disorient so when you get to the back where the recruits at, you don't know how to walk out because they have people walking out. So they try to make sure they, that you don't know how to get back to this front gate. So they left us at now the army, they can go anytime. So the, the driver that was taking the army people that was with us to their boot camp, he left us at uh, Golden Corral. Like we was sitting inside Golden Corral eating and just, you know what I'm saying, eating whatever we wanted. It was free, ate whatever we wanted until he made it back to come take us to Paris Island. So we ended up getting back on the band. When we, we pulled up outside the, the little center, it's a little center, so we had to get out the van and get on like a trailway bus. So once we got on this trailway bus, they said the man came on the bus at the front gate. He was like, the next voice you hear get on this bus is going to be a uh, Marine Corps uh, drill instructor. When you hear him talking, you might want to get your shit and move fast. Now, me, I was the one that had the folders, everyone's folders that was with us. I had those things. Like they gave me the folders to have. Like I'm carrying everybody paperwork. Everybody paperwork, like your birth certificates, your social security card, everything that you needed for them to, to process you in. I got all everybody paperwork. Cause I end up choosing to be a uh, administrator. Yes, I end up choosing to be administrator. Something simple, easy, you know. So, so I think, so I think. So, I uh, we get on the little trailway bus. They driving us around. We drove around for like 10, 15 minutes before we made it to the footsteps. So, all of a sudden, drill stuff get on them. All Marine Corps drill stuff to sound like robots. They sound like robots. So he get on the bus. I want everybody to get your shit. And I'm gonna get your shit. Five, four, three, two, one. Like five, ten seconds to do everything. So he was like, "You basically telling us you want everybody to get off this bus and get on those yellow footprints in ten seconds. So grab your shit, you know what I'm saying, and get on those footsteps in ten seconds." So 
I got everybody paperwork. So we rushing, basically. Everybody pushing each other in the back. Like, go, he come, he come. Come to find, like, it's not, I'm, I'm walking down the stairs to get off the bus. Now, at the bottom step, it was the curb, the bottom step and the curb had a, like, the bottom step and the curb was like this. It wasn't a whole step down. So when I stepped, me being tall, I stung. Boom, boom, boom. Papers go everywhere. Oh, Lord. <laughs> papers go everywhere. So, I end up scooping up papers. I'm standing on yellow footprints like this. I got everybody paper. I don't know if the shit mixed up or not. But I got everybody paper standing on the footprints. They yelling. The whole time you there, they don't stop yelling. They yelling the whole time. So, we yelling and shit, and basically, you got people out there, like, you think that they crying, they nervous. I really wasn't too much nervous, but it was just was different. It was different. Like, I, I still, I was on edge. I ain't gonna say I was nervous, but I was on edge. So, we on the yellow footprints. It was the big old silver doors. A Marine Corps boot camp, big ass silver doors that you standing on the yellow footprints, you looking at these big ass silver doors. And they telling you, on the other side of those silver doors, <laughs> that's where it become real at. Now you own the footprints, the yellow footprints, they trying to say it's the yellow brick road. You own the yellow footprints, but on the other side of on the other side of them silver doors, it's finna go down. So they telling you, you're gonna have a single file line going to them silver doors. Make a single file line going to the silver doors and stay out to them doors open. The doors opened up. Everybody walk in. Like, it's like, it's like when the doors open up, it was the brightest light you ever seen. Because it's dark outside. So when the doors open up, it seemed like it just got, the light was shining out. It was so bright. So I'm looking. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> the fuck I decided up for? So, get in now. I had a, 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 the drill instructor that you get in the beginning it's called your uh your receiving your receiving drill instructor so i had a little short receiving drill instructor now i'm tall i'm i'm over him but he wasn't nothing to play with though and he wasn't no joke man they telling you so now this is when they putting you out through all your sleep deprivation they making you go sleep deprivation you taking tests in the dark Stand up like they make like you like these next 72 hours you ain't finna go to sleep you finna be up for three days you might you might not you finna you could drink water but you might not about to eat nothing for three days but bag little lunches they gonna give you little bag lunches but you ain't going to sleep at all because you finna be making your last phone call you make your last phone call you finna be taking a lot of tests pulling out a lot of paperwork you finna be, goddamn it, answering so many questions. They gonna be evaluating you. You gonna be sitting inside this dark, cold room, and they waiting on you to fall asleep. They trying to see who's gonna fall asleep and who ain't. They put you through a sleep deprivation. Can't put your head down and then you just sitting in a dark room, just like this psychological. Because in boot camp, they basically made boot camp to tear you down. It's to break the body and the mind down to its purest form and they rebuild you the way that they want you to think. That's how boot campus was set up. So you ain't receiving them first 72 hours, you ain't finna go to sleep. You getting all your clothes, you getting all your, you turning your clothes in, you getting all your Marine Corps gear, you getting your uniforms, you getting size, like for, for your uniforms, like, Haircuts, they taking it on. Like in my, I try to be slick. Try to go to and hey, just give me a low fade. Before I went to boot camp, I try to go to the barber shop and give me a low fade all over tip fade. You know, fresh with a line, and everything. I don't see why I did that for. Because once I got there, even the low fade, they still plug my shit up. <laughs> plug my, my haircut was already low. They taking the clippers and, and just yanking it off. The old black dude. Been cutting out 30 years. Fucking people up for 30 years. Straight skins. That's it. Ain't nothing. White, black, 
Everybody schemes. Everybody getting schemes. So we get this above shot. So now you all, you in line. On this side and this side is it's doctors, like nurses. And all of them got shots, the shotguns. And you just walking with your shirt. Like now, you don't have no shirt on. You in skinny shorts and nothing on top. So you walking and they just giving you shots. Like you just going to different people and they just giving you shots. They're giving you shots. You get your wisdom teeth in your mouth, they're gonna make your dentist appointment, they're gonna cut them out. Cut the wheels and teeth out, all that. Now that's not that night, but they're making you an appointment for that to be done. So later on in uh, training, you want to go get your wheels and teeth cut out in training, and they probably give you a couple hours to recover. But then they back in your ass after those couple hours after you done had oral surgery, blood and shit like that shit. Crazy. That's a whole nother story. So end up getting all I would give. You know what I'm saying? Getting going to receive him. And yeah, that was me entering to the uh, Marine Corps. Now, I will be coming back a little later and telling y'all about that those two weeks of receiving. They basically getting you ready to be introduced to your drill instructor. I think it was a week. It might have been a week. You know what I'm saying? That week of receiving, they they get basically tag you, get you ready for these motherfuckers to call to be yelling at you 24-7, no, 365. They is not finna be stopped yelling at you. It's just gonna be yelling, yelling, yelling all the fuck time. So if you are a weak, like a mentally weaker individual, this is going to be tough because it's not gonna be a moment of your day. Where you ain't got somebody, the good thing is, only thing you got to do is follow instructions. You follow instructions, you know how to follow instructions, you're going to be good. But if you one of the ones that you hard-headed and you can't follow simple instructions, because that's the good thing about Marine Corps Boot Camp, they are going to be telling you exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. You don't have to think at all. And as a recruit, that's your like you don't have to think because you got drill instructors giving you instructions all day every day. You don't gotta think. They just tell you do what they tell you to do and you good. You good. So that's my journey from going from 11th grade to entering the Marine Corps. Thank you. Stay tuned. Because I got a few more stories to be telling you how boot camp went and how it was when I entered into the fleet. Stay tuned. And MOS school. MOS training and MCT. MCT training. So stay tuned. There's more to come.